Wait, I have searched all rooms. Nothing. I shall inform the Cyber Leader. Agreed. My work's fantastic. I'm not sure about this. I mean, what if it goes wrong? It can't go wrong. According to the readout, he's already in place. In the chronosphere. We should get a move on then before the cyber patrols return. This way. Warning, this is the restricted zone. It is off limits to skin the drones. Warning. He's here. He's in place. Are you okay? He can't hear you, stupid. He's locked into the chronosphere's matrix. Okay, time to get you going. Good luck, Doctor. I just hope you can change the web of time. Activating Chronosphere's controls. Inputting coordinates. Leaving 1951, heading for Nexus Point at 3286. Got it? He's gone. How long do you think before we cease to exist, then? Mothership Cassius to Shuttle Foreman. Come in, please. Go ahead, Cassius. Is that you, Kruger? Wretched video link is terrible. Yes, it is, Professor. Any sign of them or this bizarre wave effect of theirs? No, nothing. There's no trace of anyone. And it's a dry planet. No oceans or even a lake that could cause a wave. I need to report back to Central, Professor Osborne. What state was base camp in? Untouched, Mr. Kruger. There's no sign of the people. Professor, how could they have vanished so quickly? Two teams in two days, where could they have gone? Uh, well, I rather think that's what we're trying to find out. That's an interesting point you've made. What's that? The initial team vanished exactly two solar days ago. Because Marcus's team went a day later, but much to the exact second. Eighteen hours ago. And how long's a day down there? Ah, eighteen hours. In other words, the effect is due any minute now, if it runs to shit. You're breaking up, Professor. Say again. Well, well, consider this. The base camp is fine. Just a little of the tower appears. Professor, what's going on? Crook at the temple. There's something coming from it. Oh, my God. Professor. It's like a huge tidal wave of, of energy. Are you getting the readings on these groups? No, Professor. Warm central! A, a huge wave of, of temporal energy! Temporal oh, energy yes. as, as in time distortion? Tell central! At the center of it! Yes. Professor! At the center yes. of it! Is a cyberman! Professor! Professor Osborne! Enjoying our solitude and well away from the prying eyes of Central. And the wretched accountants. Dr. Smythe, I am an accountant. Oh. <laughs> so, Administrator, what have you discovered in the ruins? Honestly, Dr. Smythe? Nothing at all. Just rock walls, rock rooms, and even, would you believe, a few rocks. Gosh, all that money and nothing to show for it. <laughs> you remind me of a dean I used to know. Oh, well, something will turn up soon, you know. It always does. I hope so. This project has cost Central a great deal. My science departments are under threat of closure, which I'm not prepared to allow. Oh, I see. I thought it was about people. <sighs> well, obviously I want to find out what happened to the other two teams. Both Ian Osborne and Tom Kazmarkis were associates of mine. Whilst I may be willing to accept they're probably dead, I... Well, I need to know how. Why? Well, if the answer's inside that temple there, the doctor will find it. I admire your confidence. Central had confidence, too. Or they wouldn't have requested his presence. Yes, well, I'm not keen on strangers. Like to work with trusted staff, you see. 
Yet here I am, surrounded by more strangers than I can count, all because of temporal energies and the Cyberman. Yes, the Doctor mentioned that to me. I understand the idea of temporal waves. Well, I pretend to, because it shuts him up if I tell him I know what he's on about. But what exactly are Cybermen? Something from our past. We thought they'd gone for good. But according to the Cassius reports, the last thing Osborne said was the word Cyberman. That was enough to get all your bigwigs in an uproar. Well, that and the loss of two entire research teams. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, Dr. Smythe, have a chat with another of my strangers. Young Goddard over there. He's been seconded to my team as an official cyber expert. I'm quite sure he'll happily fill you in. I'd best get on with checking the survey team in the temple. Uh, Goddard! Administrator Isherwood? Come here, lad. Uh, Reese Goddard. Meet Evelyn Smythe, the Doctor's companion. Oh, my God. You've traveled in time. Wow. Well, I am... Um, uh, well, yes. It's not that different from any other form of travel, really. Nothing to get too excited over. Oh, come on! It's a science way beyond anything the 33rd century has to offer. I read the reports about you and the Doctor. Fantastic stuff, if it's true. Well, I, I would imagine it's all true. Well, unless he wrote it. In which case, it'll be rather one-sided and full of self-import, but basically sound. But... Tell me about these uh, Cybermen. The administrator tells me you're his hired expert on such things. Oh, he does, hey? Right. Mr. Renshard, how are those corridor scans coming? Uh, Mr. Carey, what's the communications link like? Oh, listen to her. All business and no pleasure, boss. Boring. Yeah, we're experts, so you need time to do our job. Yeah, right. Expert time wasters. Uh -huh. mm. Doctor, have you managed to transcribe those hieroglyphs yet? Getting there, Dr. Savage. My scans, oh beautiful lady, suggest that neither party used that route. The ground hasn't been disturbed and there are no residual thermo shadows imprinted on the walls. Yeah, our subcutaneous transponders, oh beloved mistress of my dreams, are still registering with Isherwood's base camp. Your dreams, gentlemen, are diseased places no self-respecting maggot would want to visit. Well, Nicky, I can tell you any number of fascinating facts about this temple. Yes, Doctor. Sadly, none of which will explain the disappearance of the earlier teams. What's that noise? <laughs> We've set up an echo field from on the transponder receiver here. It bounces our signals back so we can't be traced. Switch it off, Mr. Renchard. It's not you who'll get the flak from Isherwood. Yeah, spoils all our fun. Anyway. What can you tell us, Doctor? Hmm? Oh, where shall I start? It's similar to a temple built by the Mayans. A complex system of one-way doorways exists around the area closest to the exit, which suggests that once in here, the occupants weren't expected to get back out. A prison? Unlikely. Too much area, too much airflow. No, I imagine that whoever came in here did so by choice. I'd also guess, Mr. Renchard, that if you did go down that corridor you've been scanning, it'd circle around and come out there. Hell, I didn't even see that. It's no more than a crack. <laughs> You'd need to be pretty thin to get through that. Latrines? I'd imagine so, or burial. Somewhere private, anyway. How about a shrine? Good question, Mr. Carey. However, there's nothing here to suggest any kind of religious reverence. No, it's just a building. Not a temple, then? No, probably not. We call it a temple because it resembles something we were familiar with, but no. No, it's more like, well, a palace, I suppose. Somewhere exclusive. Uh, boss, Doc, we've got 50 minutes before that wave effect is due. Well, we, we guess it's due, going on past experience. Keep us appraised, Carey. Sure thing, boss. Now... About these inscriptions? Well, yeah, right. Well, here's the fascinating bit. I haven't got a clue what they mean. I've never seen a script like it. There's no logic to them, no repeated symbols. My best guess is it's just a name rather than a set of instructions or a story. What is fascinating is the stone doorway they surround. Mr. Renshard? <clears throat> OK, it's made of the same stone as the rest of the temple. Uh building, palace, whatever. It is, however, significantly thinner than the walls and other doors. It can't lead anywhere as the stone wall behind it is solid and there are no gaps. Thus, it's not a door. It's a covering of some kind. Yes, 
<laughs> yes, of course. Behind this could be a, a picture, or more carvings, or more symbols. Fascinating. We must get it open. It won't have been open for centuries. That'll be difficult. Yeah, and we don't want the air to damage whatever's beneath it, if it was hermetically sealed. Mr. Renchard? At last, yes, boss? Go back to Isherwood and get some of his thoroughly expensive vacuum cylinders so we can preserve the hieroglyphs and anything else we find inside. See you all later. Well, I'll tell you one thing it is. What's that? The way out. Still got that one to find. The way out? I wonder. Millennia ago, Earth's solar system had an extra planet known as Mondas. It left orbit of our sun and the inhabitants went underground and created a civilization that paralleled that of Earth, but one far more advanced than its human equivalent. They mastered the ability to pilot their planet and return to Earth, drawing off its power and planning to turn us into what they had become, Cybermen. 90% of their organs replaced with plastic, their brains run by computers, all emotion purged. It sounds ghoulish. Uh, I take it they weren't exactly a pushover. Well, they had the strength of ten men and could live in the airless vacuum of space, so no. However, for all their so-called superiority, they had weaknesses. Their early bodily functions could be affected by extreme radiation, for example, and as they progressed, they supplanted some plastic for metals, longer lasting but easily cloggable by non-corrodables such as gold dust. Again, they overcame this, learning and progressing with each defeat. Did no one try to stop them? Mundus was destroyed. But it transpired there were other planets they had previously conquered and seeded. Wherever they come from, death and destruction follows as they relentlessly take men and women and turn them into soulless members of their armies. Then, after the great Orion Cyber Wars of the 26th century, they seem to have died out, except for a few odd skirmishes. The fact that Osborne claimed a Cyberman presence was found here has sent jitters through Central. I can understand why. You know, we sent the Doctor and the others into that temple thing. What if the Cybermen are in there? That's what they're trying to find out. Oh, we aren't really getting anywhere. I don't know, it's giving a bit. Like we've relieved some pressure on it. Savage, Kerry, look. What? We've made a mistake. See there? Scratch marks. They look fresh. Oh my god, do you think this door opened recently? Suppose Professor Osborne and his team and those before managed to discover exactly what we have. Suppose they opened this doorway and unleashed this temporal wave they reported. I think we should back away for now. Tell Isherwood. No, Doctor, we need to go back with more information. Boss, the Doc may be right. If we open this and watch out comes that wave thing, well, we won't be able to warn them. We'll be dead. We don't know they're dead. What if the Doctor's wrong and it is a doorway? Well, to where? Mr. Renchard already told you there's no cavity behind it. There isn't space. I don't know. But the other teams might be trapped behind here waiting for us to rescue them. They may be dead. It's only been two days, Carey. They could be fine. Listen, Dr. Savage, you're right. You don't know. None of us do. But I think we should stop to consider all possibilities before making a fatal mistake. You know, Doctor, I questioned Central's calling in of you. I said we were a good enough team by ourselves, but they were adamant. Well, all I can see is instead of a supposed genius, I see a man scared of opening a doorway. Careful, boss. No, Mr. Carey, she's absolutely right, because what you see before you is a man whose experience of both temporal effects and Cybermen tells him to be cautious. Well, you be cautious, then. I'm trying to rescue my colleagues. Oh, I understand that, but surely you can see the you logic of what... You understand nothing! These are my friends! Stop so it, both! of you. Look! <laughs> Another stone room. Yeah, but look at that equipment. That's some pretty advanced stuff. Uh, excuse me, but neither of you seem to be alarmed by this. There shouldn't be another room. The lack of space, remember? Something huge inside something so small. Oh, of course. Excuse me, but I don't think what you're seeing is just a question of where, but also when. I wonder what this membrane covering it is. Translucent. Threaded through with these tiny slivers of... Ow! 
Minor electrical impulses. They're not fatal, though. I mean, barely even a jolt. Look, I really don't advise this course of action. I'm going to see if I can reach through. No! Yes? Savage! Yes! I, I can feel it on my hand! Ah! Savage! So, what brings you here? Cybermen have fascinated me and my family for years. I just followed in their footsteps. You? <laughs> well, I, I just go where the doctor goes these days. Travel broadens the mind and all that. I blame Charles Lindbergh. Oh, of course. I remember him. 1927, Spirit of St. Louis. First man to successfully fly the Atlantic. Imagine. If he'd never done that, we'd all still be on Earth. Dr. Smythe. Dr. Goddard, quick. What is it? It's Dr. Savage. A subcutaneous transponder has cut off suddenly. Boss! I can't see her through there. Can't see anything through there. It's too dark. It went dark as soon as she went through. It was pulled through. Good grief. Do not move. This planet is now under our control. Boss? What's happened to them? That's easy, Mr. Carey. They're half human, half Cyberman. That was quick. Yes, I believe that doorway is a time portal. A time portal under cyber control. You belong to us. You will be like...